Okay, good evening, everybody. I'm Marlene Sincaglia, the program chair for the League of Women Voters of Berkeley Heights, New Providence and Summit. Before we begin the program this evening, please stand for the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan nonprofit that works to empower voters and defend democracy. The League neither supports nor endorses or opposes candidates for office. Founded more than 100 years ago, we make democracy work by protecting voter rights and encouraging active participation. Elections and voting are core concerns for the League of Women Voters. Leagues are committed to providing fact-based information about issues and the position candidates take on those issues to help voters make their own decisions and participate in the electoral process. Any use of the League's name or footage from this event has not been authorized by the League of Women Voters. As a courtesy to the candidates, please silence cell phones and electronic devices. Please refrain from taking pictures or clapping during the forum. The moderator will indicate when clapping is appropriate. Right now, I'd like to introduce you to Michelle Bobro from the Maplewood South Orange League of Women Voters, who will be our moderator, and Pat Dolan and Patricia Dixon Black, our timekeepers. Our moderator will now introduce the candidates and the forum for part one of tonight's event. Good evening, it's a pleasure to be here with you. I'd like to introduce the two candidates for mayor. Uh, Angie Devaney is the incumbent at this uh, a Democrat, and opposing her is Jeffrey Varnaren, um, who is a Republican. And we are going to open, the format for this evening is their opening statements up to two minutes each. And then there are questions that uh, the league has formulated uh, 90 se uh, 60 seconds for each response with the possibility of a 30 second rebuttal. And then they have up to two minutes to close and tell you why you should vote for them. So we are going to start with the opening uh, statement to learn more about the candidates. Ms. Devaney. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I wanna thank the League of Women Voters. I am Mayor Angie Devaney and I hope everyone had a wonderful summer. Four years ago, when I decided to run for mayor, I did so because I believed I had a unique set of skills to offer the township. As a former township administrator and decades of experience in government and building relationships on the county, state and federal levels, I knew two things. I would work hard and I would strive every day to make an impact on our community. I also believe that my experience as a parent, PTO president, PAL secretary, and work with charitable organizations would provide me with a different perspective to guide our town forward. Over the years, many things have come full circle. As the trust fund administrator for Union County, I helped to acquire what is now Snyder Avenue Park, saving it from development. As mayor, I advocated to the county to re-turf the multi-purpose field in 2019 and build a state-of-the-art baseball field in 2021. Today, because of my partnership with the county, we are on the cusp of transforming the old Berkeley Caterers property to a passive park with walking trails, making it a gateway into Berkeley Heights. I also spent time working with the county to recuperate old grant funds through the Kids Recreation Grant Program so our recreation department could get more money what they need to continue to provide the great programming for our community. I initiated several shared service agreements such as our DPW director, dispatch services, board of health services, and salt dome saving $430,000 annually. I fought for and obtained half a million dollar federal appropriation and a $350,000 earmark in the state budget. We hired a financial planner to take a hard look at the debt incurred by the new municipal complex, started building reserves and surplus to plan for the future. We started paying off more debt and added more sources of revenue. With an eye on our finances, okay, thank you. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> With an eye on our finances, our administration started to tackle the truly difficult work of upgrading our crumbling infrastructure by looking for outsourced sources of funding. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Von Aaron. Good evening, and thank you to the League of Women Voters for hosting the candidate debate and to all of you watching. My name is Jeff Varnerin, and my wife Debbie and I chose Berkeley Heights 16 years ago to raise our family. We love this town, and it has given us so much. Now I want to go beyond giving back as a town council member and help move our town forward as mayor. As a son of a World War II vet, I was raised with public service in my blood. I've always been motivated to give back to my community. My wife, Debbie, and I have lived in this spirit as Berkeley Heights volunteers for over a decade. As an involved father and sports fan, I've coached my son Ryan's soccer and lacrosse teams for many years, and have probably coached your children as well. My nearly 20 years of volunteer emergency services provides me, provides me with a unique understanding. Our first responder community should know they can count on me as an ally. As a scientist and project manager at one of the largest healthcare companies in the world, solving complex problems is my day job. I've built many high performing teams and I am a strong listener who makes determinations based on facts and data. I have a keen eye for details and am measured by outcomes, not headlines. If fortunate enough to be elected mayor, I will bring the same approach to the workings of our government. There are several opportunities facing us collectively that if elected as mayor would be my priorities to solve. Whether it is finishing the job here at the municipal complex or fixing the wastewater treatment plant, to thinking big for solutions on drainage or expanding communications. The overriding theme must be effective planning for the future of our town, such that our infrastructure and community resources are utilized to their highest potential. Berkeley Heights deserves highly skilled and time-tested leaders to preserve our cozy town for generations to come. It's time for leaders to roll up their sleeves, pivot, own accountability, and make measured action. I'm happy to be here tonight to answer your questions because it is your choice and it's an important one. Thank you. And now to the questions that have been present, uh, prepared by the League of Women Voters. The first question will be answered first by Mr. Varnerin. What are the major challenges facing the community and how would you propose to address them if elected? Thank you for the question. Let's differentiate between crisis and challenge. A crisis is created by a lack of planning as we have seen under this administration. This won't be an issue under mine. In terms of crisis, we have the wastewater treatment plant and municipal complex. All the resources going to address those issues could have been better used in other areas to benefit the residents of this town, instead of being flushed down literally the toilet due to a lack of planning. At the core of what's going on with the wastewater treatment plant, there's this is critical infrastructure and has been neglected for for too long we must finish the job here at the municipal complex by preventing further damage the infrastructure investment is the greatest in generations i would appoint a single point of accountability to oversee the legal action and implement fixes to resolve our roof problems once and for all before the winter season comes in we must solve this now Additionally, there are long-term solutions, long-term solutions that are required for challenges like addressing. Thank you. Did you want to respond? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, in terms of uh, the major challenges, I, I, we probably agree that infrastructure is uh, a, a need of the community. Um, Lack of planning is disingenuous uh, since we got a half a million dollar federal appropriation to help solve it. Um, we've been working with the state of New Jersey through the Department of Environmental Protection to get projects into the iBank, which is a 0% loan program. And we've been actively pursuing many federal, state and county grants to uh, deal with our infrastructure. As it relates to the municipal complex, we inherited this building and the developer is the one who is at fault here, not this administration. She said stop. Oh, she's wrong, okay. <laughs> okay, 
So let me just let me start off with the positive rather than responding to Mr. Von Aaron. Um, what we've done here that I think is positive, our greatest challenge to this community is taxes and finances, no doubt about it. We've got big challenges such as infrastructure. So one of the things that we did was hire a financial planner in 2019 to make sure that we were planning for the future. We've been building our reserves on an annual basis to make sure that if we have an emergency, uh, DPW, sewer, et cetera, we have those funds. We passed a sewer connection fee that hadn't been addressed in over a decade, generating millions of a million, more than a million dollars in sewer connection fees to help address the infrastructure as well. Um, so there's been a number of things that we've done very proactively that haven't been addressed in decades, and I'm very proud of that record. Um, since uh, entering office, I've been asking for uh, what the plan is at the wastewater treatment plan. I've been asking for a detailed capital plan and what the maintenance, proactive maintenance plan is. Uh, we've received nothing to date that was of, of meaning. Um, this is why we've been um, probing into the wastewater treatment plan to understand that there have been serious issues and safety concerns for a number of years now that we're having to address as an emergency, which the town, town council declared just earlier this, this year. Next question, which has been prepared is, uh, Ms. Devaney, how would your election provide the leadership that you believe best serves the community? So I think that what I laid out in my um, opening statement is, what makes me an effective leader for the last four years. And that is that I bring government experience, relationships at the federal, state, and county level that have benefited our community over the last four years. Um, I, I addressed the half a million dollar federal appropriation for the drainage of on West Side Drainage. We've also been able to advocate for $350,000 in the state budget for the sewer plant to address uh, the problems at the sewer plant that have been long neglected well before my administration. Um, we have been able to recuperate over $200,000 from rec grants that were monies that had gone unused. And we've been able to partner with the county uh, to do things like improve Snyder Avenue Park and to acquire Berkeley caterers to make that a beautiful green space in contrast to some of the development that's uh, been going on here. So, thank you. Mr. Varner? Um, I'm an inclusive and engaging executive leader who demands accountability for, from those reporting to me. It's my job to surround myself with competent people, give them the resources, and the authority to do their day, day jobs. And then it, I expect in return that the management team will produce results that will benefit the community at, at a minimum cost. We are facing large complex infrastructure projects and my, that will benefit from my scientific and project management experience. In short, I have jumped right into construction projects, bio-waste process, and union contract negotiations and contributed in meaningful ways. I spent most of my industrial career doing the exact same thing. We're going to need this type of leadership to work through the issues at the wastewater treatment plant, municipal building, and drainage. Additionally, I also bring residents along with me. There have been a lot of changes in town and we need to bridge the new and the old. And lastly, I'm here to protect your taxes. Save that for closing. Uh. Next, how would you encourage a more diverse group of residents to volunteer to serve on the township committees and commissions? Um, first, I think we're very fortunate to have so many wonderful volunteers who serve, um, and I personally share in that, that passion. Um, but I, I think we have to take a step back and say, do the committees that we have right now work for the majority of residents, or are they meeting specific needs? Second, I know most residents would love to volunteer their time, but they are time constrained. They're busy with work and family. We need to find an easier way for time constrained residents to offer up their expertise, whether it be through virtual participation or part-time options. Um, and uh, additionally, I think we need to ex leverage already existing community groups to fill some of the voids. We don't always need a duplicative government solution to meet the needs of the community. And lastly, I'll personally reach out to the most qualified people and personally ask them. 
Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, this, again, is something that I have to say that I'm proud of our record on encouraging new and diverse people uh, and appointing them to boards and commissions. Um, we created the Economic Development Committee. That's a new committee under my administration. Uh, we created the Senior Affairs Committee, which is a new committee under my administration. And we created uh, what originally started as the Truth and Racial Healing Committee is now the Truth and Community and Inclusion, sorry, uh, committees. So we have repeatedly over the last four years um, delved into the community and asked people to get involved and encourage them to apply. And we have had a number of diverse, whether it's people of color or women or different people that just haven't gotten involved before encouraging them to come and be a part of our uh, longstanding committees as well as our new committee. So I'm proud of that record. Thank you. Uh is Berkeley Heights sufficiently transparent in its operations and communication with residents and businesses? If not, how do you propose to promote greater transparency in those areas and ensure trust among residents and businesses? Uh, again, I have to point to our record. I think that uh, communications is something that has uh, been a strong tool of this administration in terms of using different platforms, not just the township website, but social media platforms to get uh, information out. We've been using the Berkeley Heights Business and Civic uh, Organization to get the word out uh, to various businesses when there were, we were going through the pandemic and there were grants and other loan types of programs that were available. We were working with our community partners, our community business partners to do that. Um, the Economic Development Com Committee has also been a great vehicle in list building uh, and getting the, the word out to uh, our businesses. But, you know, Liza Viana, I just need to stop here and give her a hand because she's the one who really has improved. Is there room for more improvement? There's always room for more improvement. Um, so we'll keep working towards that goal. <laughs> That's okay. I'm a rule follower. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, I bend rules. Um, while some aspects of the township communication, I, I think I can agree here, have improved over the over the last several years, Andy. I think there still is more to be done. Um, I have implemented many communication strategies and platforms over my career in the, in the private sector. Bottom line is that taxpayers deserve to hear from all of our elected officials and have a centralized, reliable location for key information. A resident should not be required to have a social media account to find out breaking news. Our communication platforms must be consistent, broad reaching, reliable, and up to date. Uh, the next question is, how would you recommend modernizing, modernizing Berkeley Heights operations while honoring the tradition and history of our township? All of our efforts need to be focused on, on planning to deliver uh, an efficient form of government. Uh, there have been a, a number of items that uh, are inefficiencies when, whether it be drawn through people or process. And the reality is that we need to focus our attention on placing effective leadership and management over the places and in our government spend so that we can get the most out of our tax dollars. Right now, we're a little bit upside down with part-time heads with about two-thirds of our spend, and we need accountable leaders that are going to be there for the, the full duration to drive efficiency into our operation. Thank you. Again, this is where I think my experience in government has uh, really paid dividends. Um, we've done a number of things at town hall that have improved uh, the operations and modernization of, of uh, our operations. DPW shared service with Joe Graziano is most certainly one of them. The DPW uh, is doing a great job and it's probably the one place that I, I get repeated uh, compliments. Second to that is uh, our police department, the community policing unit, their accreditation that they're uh, pursuing. I think we can all agree that the Berkeley Heights Police Department and their operations are, are outstanding. As it relates to um, honoring our history, I, I neglected to 
you mentioned that we also started a historic preservation committee under this administration. And I know that uh, the Littell Lord has never been so looked after. And um, we have been very, uh, very lucky to have gotten so many different grants to help benefit. And then I think there's the cultural uh, history, such as Mount Carmel and making sure that we're doing things like raising the Italian flag and raising the Irish flag for uh, for uh, St. Patrick's Day. So I think that's how we're honoring our history as well. Thank you. Uh, the last question that has been prepared is, what improvements, if any, to Berkeley Heights infrastructure are needed, and what would you recommend to accomplish this? Um, that, that's something that we've been tackling since, uh, since day one. Um, the infrastructure has uh, really been kicked down the road. That's why there's such a severe problem at the west side. Um, the Greenbrook, Berkeley Heights didn't even belong to the, or does not belong to the, the Greenbrook uh, Flood Commission, which impacts the Emerson Lane area. Uh, Passaic River uh, Coalition, uh, something that we just started this year, it's the Mayor's Coalition working with uh, congressional leaders and county leaders to de-snag and de-salt the, the Passaic River, because this is a multi-county approach um, to, to addressing that, that issue. So what we've done, again, is the same thing. We hired a financial planner to look at, you know, six years ahead, what's our debt? What's falling off the books? Where can we use the infrastructure bank through the state of New Jersey with those 0% loans? What federal appropriations can we get, not just this year, but subsequent years? Where can we get earmarks in, this, in the state budgets? How can we think outside of the box and not just come to the taxpayers, uh, but go to other sources to make sure that we're addressing infrastructure needs? Thank you. Um, there are a variety of infrastructure uh, issues. We've both, I think, uh, identified several of those in prior uh, answers, but specifically uh, the wastewater treatment plant in the municipal complex are two crises that we need to solve immediately. And uh, getting funding a couple years out for these is, is not going to help us. We need the funding now. But let's, let's talk a little bit more about drainage because I think we have to think big for solutions here. Um, this is not just an issue for a sliver of the community in the west side drainage area, but it is an issue across the entire town. And in fact, this is a regional issue that is even bigger than Berkeley Heights. It's great that a small piece of funding was secured, but we need 20 times that for just the west side drainage project. Small fixes are gonna result in unintended additional, potentially more devastating problems that we are currently blind to. We need a comprehensive plan that includes funding, which will only be realized through partnership with our, with our neighbors. Thank you for sharing your views on these. And now it's time for closing. So tell us why we should vote for you and why you're the best candidate. Um, Mr. Mr. Vernieri. Great. Thank you to the League for hosting this event and to Angie for the lively exchange and for the services you've provided to this community. Bravo. I pride myself on being a hard worker and problem solver, but importantly, in getting things done. I've demonstrated the ability to listen and hear all perspectives to get to action as a town councilman. I want only the best for Berkeley Heights and to ensure we make it a place that everyone can call home for generations. In my tenure on council, I have brought in experts that leverage cutting edge technology to clearly document problems and a recommended path forward for the municipal building. This should have been done at the first sign of problems, not years later. This was a lack of effective planning and administration. Let there be no doubt, there won't be a lack of planning when I'm mayor. I've connected the, with legislators who've advocated for funding for the FLAIR project. I've ensured the administration is proactively monitoring for harmful odors with the wastewater treatment plant, rather than expecting public complaints to trigger action. Our residents should not be required to have a personal relationship to get results-based action. I've required the justification for expenses paid by this town rather than wish list spending. And lastly, I've introduced technology based solutions as opposed to paper processing. And if implement, implemented by the administration, will greatly reduce costs. I'm excited to be working with Manny and Michelle and proud to have these two experienced professionals on my team. Their business acumen and objective perspectives will be crucial and will be crucial to the success of our community. They have done this, I have done this, and we will do this together. I am running for mayor and honor, honored to be a member of this team and I'm asking you to vote column A 
in support of Manny, Michelle, myself. Thank you very much. And we look forward to your support in making Berkeley Heights the best community. And take a different talk. I would like to close tonight's debates by saying thank yous. Thank you to Jeff, Susan, Dio, Manny, and Michelle for tossing your hats into the ring to run for office. It is not easy to put your name on a ballot, exposing yourself to public scrutiny. Public service takes a toll on your family, professional life, and social life. Thank you to my right-hand person, Liza Viana, to say that she is a workhorse and never stops is a gross understatement. She always burns the midnight oil looking for another grant, writing backup documents for budget appropriations and keeping the cogs of the town hall wheel moving, usually at mock speed. Thank you to the town hall staff, or as I like to call them family. You work hard, you are underpaid compared to your colleagues in other towns. You have such pride in our community and you give every ounce of effort and caring you possibly can. Thank you to my mama squad in the back row. I owe you so much for your fellowship, your friendship, your funny gifts during COVID, perspective, support when you just can't find that email from the school principal, and when is freshman orientation. Your love and sharing your beautiful daughters as part of Abby's journey is immeasurable in my life. Not to mention Julie DeFeo's Snapchats. Thank you to all the wonderful new people who are out there tonight too. I have met along this journey. Your support and encouragement inspires me every day. And finally, thank you to my family, George, Ryan, and Abby. You are my heart and soul and my reason for even wanting to give back. This job that nets about 10 cents an hour comes at a great price to you. When others were cooking meals together and playing board games, you were stuck with takeout and a mom who could do nothing more at the end of those COVID days. I'm not sure that you appreciated another run for office, but you supported me anyway. I can care and fight for Berkeley Heights because you empower me with your love and support. Thank you. Thank you to both of the candidates. You have very differing and similar opinions. You have a choice to make. As I like to say, you are hiring one of them. So make your decision as to who you think best fits your, the qualifications that you have for your mayor. Thank you very much. And we'll take a very, very short break while we get ready for the uh, council candidates. Thank you very much.
And now for Act Two. Thank you. Um, we will begin the second portion of our form or of our event tonight, hearing candidates for the Township Council. On my left, your right, are Susan Pogue and Diomedes Saturis. Close. <laughs> And uh, their opposition, Manuel Couto and Michelle Bartiromo. The format is as it was before. They will each have two minutes for an opening statement. Uh, there are questions that have been prepared by the League of Women Voters for which they have one minute to answer and 30 second rebuttal if they wish, and then a two minute closing. So, um, the, per, the opening statements are in this order. Ms. Poe, Ms. Bartiro, Bartiromo, Mr. Satoris, I'm sorry, and Mr. Kudo. So two minutes, Ms. Pogue. So thank you to the League of Women Voters and to our audience for coming out. It's a very important thing that you're doing tonight. The word politics is derived from the Greek word politica, meaning affairs of the city. I recently came across a quote attributed to Larry Hardiman who joked, the word politics is derived from the word poly, meaning many, and the word ticks means blood-sucking parasite. I am never one who thought she would end up in politics, yet I've been involved in politics since 2016, but I still do not see myself as a politician. I am motivated not by a desire to achieve power, but by a desire to give back and help my town be the best it can be. For those who do not know me, my name is Susan Pogue. I'm a first grade teacher in town, an author of children's books and academic texts. I have been married for 34 years, and I have a mother of two daughters and one Karen Terrier. I have volunteered as a Girl Scout camping leader, and I also ran Relay for Life Luminaria Committee for years. I live, work, and play in Berkeley Heights. I'm your neighbor, and for some of you, I'm your friend and or colleague. I previously served on the town council from 2017 through 2020, where my passion to make a difference was evident in the changes I was able to implement. I analyzed outdated sewer ordinances and worked with the director to develop an updated system for inspections. I sponsored the no-knock ordinance, which makes a difference for residents who do not want to be bothered by outside solicitors. I created the award-winning volunteer-led grants committee, which seeks and successfully received funds to enhance the livability of our community. While on council, I was both the council VP and served as a representative to the planning board and a member of the master plan committee, subcommittee, sorry. I found this assignment an amazing way to help shape the future. I continue to serve on the planning board and I'm also continuing to serve on the grants committee. I care what happens in this town. It's the longest time I've lived in a community. I've been here for 30 years and worked here for 20. Sometimes I go weeks without leaving Berkeley Heights and that's okay in my book. Thank you very much. I'm also a rule follower. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. Ms. Bartiromo. Okay, hi. Uh, thank you to the League of Women Voters for hosting tonight's event and for giving me the opportunity to share a bit about myself. Before I begin, I would like to wish every candidate good luck. I look forward to answering questions from the public and look forward to hearing the answers from all the candidates. My name is Michelle Bartiromo and I'm running for town council because I love this town. I love this community and I love the people that make it so great. I'm a lifelong resident of Berkeley Heights whose roots go back over 100 years. The house I currently live in with my husband, Dan, and my two sons, Sammy and Benny, was built by my grandparents and built by my great uncle, Benny. I have fond childhood memories of running through my grandmother's kitchen, grabbing a meatball and watching her cook. Family and friends are everything to me and are always welcome into my home. Anyone who knows me knows this to be true. I want to bring this same openness to town council. Helping the community is something that I have done my whole life and I don't plan on stopping. As a young adult, I built houses for Habitat for Humanity, volunteered for many years at the Amber Paiso 5K run and coached my son's PAL soccer teams on the same fields I played on. In fact, I attended Woodruff School, Columbia School and Governor Livingston and happy to have my sons following in my footsteps. Another fact about me is I dress up as Woody the Owl for Woodruff School, the school mascot for six years, and that was a fantastic experience for me. 
For years, I volunteered at many other town events, such as cooking hot dogs at the PAL and Memorial Day parades to helping with the boxer ball tournaments at Peppertown Park. In my professional career, I have worked as a manager for the same company for 25 years. I resolve conflicts daily and am known for my listening skills, despite what my husband might say. My career experience is very transferable to town council. I have mastered how to listen, all while remaining calm in difficult situations. I review contracts and work with attorneys daily. I led an arbitration team and currently sit on an internal appeals panel. Looking at the big picture, negotiating compromise and reaching solutions are part of my everyday. And these are the very skills that will make me an effective town council member. I'm excited to be participating tonight and I'm looking forward to your questions. Thank you. Um, next, Mr. Satoris. Good evening. My name is Diomedes Satoris. I'm running since my name is so easily pronounceable and can easily fit on a lawn sign. But you can call me Dio. Since I've been here for three years, I've seen the strengths of our community, and I've thought long and hard on how we can harness these strengths to chart a better course for the next few years, where we stay a strong, thriving, and dynamic town. Under Mayor Devaney's leadership, Berkeley Heights has become a more inclusive, safer, greener, and financially prudent community. It, is an, it would be an honor to serve with her and continue this progress. As an attorney, I've advocated for people from all different backgrounds, including immigrants, crime victims, and law enforcement officers. And if elected, I'll be the only attorney on town council. Advocating for residents also means understanding the complex issues that, have come, that would come before the council. As a recipient of bachelor's degrees and master's degrees in public administration from Cornell University, I'm uniquely suited to produce sound public sector governance. I'm also the director of a labor union of 1,500 faculty at Rutgers and Rowan Universities who teach the next generation of doctors, nurses, and health professionals. As of late, I've fought for, to close gender-based pay inequity, as well as extend parental leave, child care, and other benefits to my members. As your town councilman, I can fight for our residents the same way I fight for everyday health care workers. You don't have to be a longtime resident or rub, rub elbows with those in power to have your voice heard. Every single person matters and is part of our success story. And I look forward to a spirited debate and asking for your vote for myself and BH Better together. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kuda. Hello, and thank you to the League for hosting tonight's debate and everyone else for being here. My name is Manuel Kuda, and I believe in working with all of you to keep Berkeley Heights the great town it is, now and in the future. I've kept my word the last six years by my volunteer work, supporting the Fire and Rescue Squad, the new town hall, at the famous Winter Walk, supporting our local businesses with Restaurant Month, the new pool, YMCA, the town concerts, and the parades. My involvement with various township committees, Peppertown Park, Memorial Park Committee, the Economic Development Committee, the Downtown Beautification Committee, and on several township cleanup projects that keep our town beautiful. I have over 30 years experience working as a real estate professional and in running a small business. I quit. Wife Marie and I moved from Newark to Berkeley Heights over 24 years ago. We moved here to raise- I quit. For the schools, for the parks, and for the beauty and value found in this growing I quit. inclusive community. I ran then and I run now because I want to make a difference. We residents deserve to get the greatest return from our tax dollars on the state, federal and local levels and go after all grant opportunities that exist. I've worked with various CFOs in our town to bring a balanced budget, cutting where needed and even brought in a zero tax increase one year, all working with a bipartisan council. I've always looked to collaborate with the people of Berkeley Heights, regardless of party or politics. And I know that affordability Inclusivity and safety are the three things we all are working toward. I'm looking forward to hearing your questions and to a hearty debate. There's still so much to complete. Thank you. Thank you. The first question that was created by the League of Women Voters is, what do you consider the most important challenges facing Berkeley Heights? What ordinances would you propose to address them? Ms. Bartiromo. Um, in my opinion, the number one critical issue facing Berkeley Heights today is the sewage plant. Um, I feel like if it continues to go unnoticed, I quit. Uh, it can become a public health crisis for all of Berkeley Heights. Um, it's a safety issue 365 days a year and it needs to be addressed. If we don't address it, you're not going to be able to flush your toilet. You're not going to be able to take a shower. So as far as ordinances go, I, I, I don't think that 
ordinances are necessarily the answer to everything. I think that it takes problem solving to come to a solution. So I would rather problem solve myself and come to the solution than look to have a law passed. I think you can get more done that way. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Pogue. So as we all know, sewage and draining, drainage um, are big infrastructure problems. And I think that the mayor has done a great job tackling infrastructure. A lot of it, as she said, was kicked down the road for a long time. And um, the fiscal plan that's in place now can help as we apply for grants and utilize that New Jersey infrastructure 0% loan. Um, one thing, um, Michelle, I love that you're talking about the sewer because one of my favorites is you know, fog, fat soils, and grease. And every resident can actually do something to help our sewer system by making sure that they're not dumping fat soils and grease into their sinks and toilet bowls. So we agree on that. Thank you. Mr. Kudo? Press one more time, Ms. Bogan. Yes, I certainly Press. can. What do you consider the most important challenges facing Berkeley Heights? What ordinance, ordinances would you propose to address them? Well, when I was first elected, it was the roads. Now it's the sewer plant. Planning and vision is incredibly important, both short and long term. By planning for the issues, we can prevent them and not be reactive to emergencies and breakdowns. Chasing funding is looking for grants during emergencies is not realistic. These issues and its troubling was not brought to the council's full attention immediately, along with possible solutions to review. We are still waiting for the plan and the health of the wastewater treatment plant. That is why we are now have a crisis. Uh, transparency, problem solving, vision, communications are planning skill sets that I bring to the table. But one thing when you mentioned or, uh, ordinances to solve the issues, ordinances don't solve issues. It's planning and, planning and cooperative work together, not just laws. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Satoris. Yes, I, I would agree with my, um, with the, what has been said so far. Uh, definitely uh, infrastructure. I can see it firsthand in my own neighborhood. Uh, how many sidewalks um, you know, need to be repaired, how many different things around town um, just hasn't been there because we haven't invested the time and money and those problems, they fester over the time. And uh, thanks to Mayor Devaney's leadership, uh, we've been able to catch up. Um, and she was able to succeed in doing a lot of this stuff, even though there was a global pandemic happening at the same time. Um, so it's important that we don't go backwards um, and make the same mistakes and putting problems off and have a, you know, a, hands-on approach to these, these critical problems. Thank you. The next topic is, how do you plan to maintain property taxes while meeting the increasing needs of the residences? Uh, Mr. Kudo. <laughs> it's not just maintaining property taxes. Uh, going after property taxes is not something I wanna do. The burden is high. In my position, it should not be a burden to the taxpayer as well. Streamlining services, utilizing best practices, and reviewing what other towns are doing to make it work is something that is constantly being done and needs to continually be done. That and looking for funding from grants and utilizing not just the portal from the county, but those from the League of Municipalities and from other private and public sectors. We need to constantly monitor those things to keep the taxes comfortable for our residents. No stone should be left unturned. And that sometimes includes making the rough decision and take, making cuts where needed. I've thought, I think I've done that before. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Satoris? Yeah, I think uh, one thing that we've done really well the last few years is um, we've been able to access other revenue sources, federal uh, sources of funds, grants, other things. Uh, that's actually helped improve our bond rating. Um, and for that reason, we need to continue that. Um, but it all takes a lot of time and work to get the right people and the right strategy so that we're successful and we compete those dollars successfully. Um, and thanks again to Mayor Devaney, and uh, I, I hope to continue that progress. I've, uh, myself, like I said, I have a master's in public administration, and I, I hope to be, uh, add to that progress that we've made uh, by, uh, by really uh, maybe accelerating a, a lot of those efforts that we've had. Thank you. Um, Ms. Bartiromo. Um, this is an important question because it affects all of us, right? Um, I'm sure no one in this room wants to see their taxes go up. So we need to look at the resources we have to try to reduce taxes wherever possible. I do this in my everyday job. I find ways to allocate resources. I have meetings. I deal with attorneys. I look for solutions. And I listen. And I would look for the best way not to burden the taxpayers. 
We also need to find a way to lessen the tax burden on those people that don't have children in school. Uh, I'm, look, I'm asking for you to give me a chance to show you what I can accomplish. Thank you, and Ms. Pogue. Uh, yes, hi. So I don't know if anyone knows this fun fact, there's 565 municipalities in the state of New Jersey. We're a pretty small state. And really the only way to save money for the taxpayers is through more shared services. We need to make sure we're looking at everything that we can do to share with towns surrounding us. And I know the mayor has done a great job as has Liza Viana in joining groups um, from different townships and towns to look into shared services. Uh, the other thing I wanna talk about a little bit is needs and wants. So it's like economics 101, right? You don't spend more than you have. And I feel like the elephant in the room is the building that we're sitting in. And the mayor inherited this building that we're sitting in and it came with a lot of problems. And despite that and the challenges of COVID compounding it, I think they have done a great job managing it. I'd like to see other people try to manage such a large problem that they inherited with such dignity and grace. Thank you. Thank you. And you're first up. Yes, are you ready for the question? I'm ready. What are your budget priorities for the municipality? What items would you recommend be increased and or decreased? Increased or decreased in the budget. So, um, so I'm gonna say um, decreased. I think we really have to look tightly at our spending. And I know I do this in my own home. And I think we have to look here at what we're doing and where we're spending our money. And pretty things are nice, but they're not always needed. So if you walk around this building, you'll see some things that are very pretty, but not necessarily needed. So I think decisions were made that didn't have to be made that way. So I hope to look forward as we move forward with the new construction and, and the Connell and all these other things that our town are bringing um, that we would decrease uh, some of the things that we don't need and increase things like services to seniors, veterans, and um, other residents that maybe are marginalized sometimes. Thank you. Ms. Bordaromo. Um, I have not sat through the budget town uh, for process for the township, but I see and feel the problems that you do. The lack of sufficient drainage, the bumpy roads, um, failing infrastructure. The budget needs to be aligned with our community. Like Susan said, the same way we manage our day-to-day -day lives based on our needs. The budget needs to be transparent and fiscally responsible. We need to make sure we have the tools needed to perform the job effectively and efficiently. I'm all about teamwork and listening to the ideas of others. Again, we need to be transparent, accountable, and open, and we need to be looking for all and any infrastructure money from both state and federal government. We also need a strategic plan that doesn't look just one year ahead, but looks five years ahead. And Mr. Satoros. Yeah, so um, I think definitely investments in, in infrastructure um, and uh, making our town more resilient to climate change. I mean, that's, we have the, one of the hottest summers on record. Um, why you're having drainage problems is it's directly related to even stronger storms that we've been having. So I think we need to take a serious look at what we can do. And now with um, more money at the federal level for climate change, I think that's a, might be an opportunity um, to complement our infrastructure needs. Um, as far as uh, places that we can um, look to be far more financially responsible, um, I would be curious to look at um, sort of the, our property tax base and other um, revenue that we get from our sort of corporate uh, citizens here in uh, Berkeley Heights versus what kinds of donations and they, that they, they provide for the community and reviewing exactly what kind of, um, you know, subsidy and breaks that they have versus revenue they bring in. Um, and that might be a, a place where we could, um, you know, strengthen our fiscal picture. And Mr. Kudo. Cents on the dollar. That's what Berkeley Heights gets. And I've been on the council now for six years. And my predecessor, my running mate, Pete Brooke, also brought this up. And one thing many people don't realize is that your tax dollar has to be stretched as far as possible. When we get 18 cents in Berkeley Heights, the council working with our CFOs and everyone else works really, really hard to keep the budget low. We have fixed costs and approximately half a million dollars of discretionary funds to work with. Working in cooperation with state, federal, and local entities, including surrounding towns and the county is important. And we have to look at those things. It isn't always borrowing money at zero interest rates that's gonna solve an issue. Sometimes you need a bigger picture and more courage to take, take the decisions and make the cuts. Thank you. Thank you. 
And what improvements, if any, to Berkeley Heights infrastructure are needed? And what would you recommend to accomplish this? Mr. Zatoris. So, uh, like I think I've said in previous answers, um, you know, we have, we have a great uh, sort of uh, budget now at the state and also infrastructure dollars at the federal level that will complement any kinds of strategies that we've already had in place. Um, again, Mayor Devaney has been successful um, getting at least, you know, for example, half a million for the West Side drainage, you know, project um, and definitely other um, sources by working with, you know, our, our, our state and federal officials. And uh, I think, you know, we can, we can just, the, the opportunity right now, the timing is right with where the money is that we can, um, it's a time to invest in this heavily. Takuto? Berkeley Heights, in 2022, Berkeley Heights was listed as the second safest city in New Jersey. That was done in cooperation with all stakeholders. Infrastructure requires not just short-term planning, but long-term planning and vision. There are items out there that have been kicked down the road, but they were known and they were not disclosed to the council. The council's job is allocating funding to get these problems fixed and to empower our workers. And by the way, we thank our, our workers here in town hall and we thank our volunteers. Thank you. Oh, great question. So relationships are really important. And you know, thank goodness Mayor Devaney has relationships with the county, with the state, and at the federal level that has brought dollars in to help our infrastructure. When things have been crumbling for 20 years, you can't expect them to be fixed quickly. So it takes time. And continuing to seek grants for roads and the sewer plant especially, is gonna be critical in the next couple of weeks, uh, sorry, a years. Wish it was that fan fast. And the master plan is a vision for our town. And I really um, am so proud of the work that the master plan subcommittee did to create a vision for the next 10 years of uh, in Berkeley Heights. We actually just won an award from the New Jersey State Planning Association or organization. So really proud of that as well. So thank you to our mayor. Thank you. And uh, Ms. Bartiromo. Hey, thank you for the question. Um, I think the crisis in town right now is the sewage plant, but the systemic issue is drainage. We need a comprehensive drainage plan for all of Berkeley Heights, not just a small area on the west side. Um, as a lifelong resident, I have seen the devastation of flooding. And from my job in insurance, I've seen the devastation from flooding. I have relatives that live on Dogwood Lane who consistently flood. We all know that behind Park Avenue near Chaucer Drive and River Bend Road, it's every time there's a storm, it floods. I have a friend who lives on Robbins Avenue who had to raise her house after Hurricane Floyd because of flooding. So we can't just study a small area of Berkeley Heights. We need to study the entire town and come up with a comprehensive plan for all of Berkeley Heights. Thank you. You may have mentioned these before. There are several drainage issues in the town. While there have, has been some grant money to help identify what needs to be done and how to do it, what should the residents expect of their municipal government in being able to fund the necessary remedial projects? Uh, Ms. Bartiromo. Um, as far as mun municipal government goes, it needs to be, we need to be transparent. You need to know everything that we're doing. We need to be accountable. I'm working for you. So I need to be accountable for my, for my actions and I need to be accountable for everyone who's working for us. And we need to be open. The taxpayers of, of Berkeley Heights are our number one priority. Um, we need to make sure the people are empowered and we need to make, make smart, efficient policies. We need to have a strategic plan that looks to the future of Berkeley Heights, not just now. We have to be in front of the problem and not try to solve the problem when it's too late. We need to face the challenges ahead by listening and respecting the work and thoughts of others and bringing people together to address the current challenges. As a new council member, I will welcome new ideas, but work without disrespecting all the hard work that has already been done. Thank you. Um, Ms. Pogue. So I believe um, the current financial plan should continue applying for grants, investing our own capital, asking the state and federal governments for budget funds. And the mayor has used her relationships as we spoke about to obtain these funds. And the one thing that the mayor has been very good at is not borrowing more than we are paying off in debt, which is also something that was happening for a while. So she has 
pivoted from that. And I know someone mentioned the New Jersey Environmental Infrastructure Trust. It is a low or zero interest loan. And it is something that is, oh, I'm on time, okay. Um, it is something that's really important to utilize because it is a loan, but it's a zero interest. The money's there for infrastructure projects, including drainage and drainage studies. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Kudo. Question one more time, please, because there's a phrase I want to make sure I get right. Uh, drainage? No, there's another one in there. <laughs> there are several drainage issues in the town. While there has been some grant money to help identify what needs to be done and how to do it, what should the residents expect of their municipal government in being able to fund the necessary remedial projects? Word remedial is what I want to make sure of. Because remedial I mean, to me means short term. And none of these projects are short term. Right now we have to identify properly what the problem is. Um, as a side note, I have a degree in geology. Um, so I study rocks, I study drainage, I study water. And when I've seen some of these things, I've read some of the studies, I've suggested some items that I think are slightly outside the box that will help some of these issues. And some of them might be just increasing our catch basin size or find a way to use the our dollars correctly to identify the problem on a bigger scale, make it a long lasting fix. Putting a band aid on things don't always work. It sounds nice, it helps the residents and the residents see it, but the next generation doesn't. Same as when you plant a tree, you don't plant a tree for yourself today, you plant a tree for the next generation. And that's one thing we have to look at is long term planning and vision. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Satoris. Yeah, I guess I will second um, my running mate, Mr. Pogue said. Um, and um, you know it, these projects do take you know a lot of time, and I think you know, communicating what those expectations are to residents is important. I think we can do a little bit better job of doing that. Um, even stuff in my own neighborhood right now, uh, you know, I know it's not part of the town per se, but the PSENG is you know replacing a whole gas pipeline right now, and it's disturbing uh, a lot of uh, what we're having in the neighborhood currently. Um, but there was no communication from PSENG to to our, our residents. And I think when we do major projects, there should be better communication and understanding when things need to be replaced and how long they'll take. What would you recommend needs to be done in order to maintain acceptable coverage and outstanding service that we get from our fire and rescue organization? Um, Mr. Kudo. Well, first, I want to say thank you very much for our volunteers. Uh, Berkeley Heights and the Rescue Squad and the Fire Department are both 24-7 a volunteer-based organization. They work really, really hard to protect our residents. And the way we help them out is we constantly support them. And how we support them, Rescue Squad asked us for money for LOSAP. We funded that. Rescue Squad needed repairs for the building. We funded that. The Fire Department asked for a new fire truck. I was, a, I was one of the people who voted yes for the new fire truck. You see it there. We have to empower our volunteers and give them the best tools and training possible so they can do their job, as well as listen to their needs. Um, I have sat down with the fire department and spoken to them. I've attended their fundraisers, and I've attended the fundraisers and spoken to the rescue squad. Thank you. Mr. Satoris, one more time. What would you recommend needs to be done in order to maintain acceptable coverage and outstanding service that we get from our fire and rescue organization? Yeah, I, I think it, it comes down to um, listening to them and uh, taking the time to figure out exactly what they needed to, to, to support them. Um, you know, previously in my career, I uh, represented law enforcement. It was customers and border protection officers. Uh, but, you know, even they provide a very critical role for our country. And uh, when I went to, um, you know, the different ports of entry and really see what they do on a different daily basis and the, the long line sometimes of either, you know, JFK airport or different border crossing and what they really need to um, survive and keep us safe, um, you really find a, a appreciation for that. Um, and I think I, you know, I'll bring that appreciation locally here when talking to our, our first responders to make sure they have the support they truly need. Thank you. Ms. Bartiromo? First and foremost, um, I think we can all agree that we're truly blessed for all the volunteers that we have in this town for both the EMT and the rescue squad. And we're very lucky that we have that service available to us 24-7. Um, if you elect me to town council, 
I'm open to looking into anything that we can do that is within our ability and our wallets to help with these volunteers. We need to provide resources for these volunteers that is in the best interest of the community and the volunteers. Um, as Manny stated, we were able to, to get LOSAP for the rescue squad and hopefully the fire department will follow suit. Um, and that's it, I just wanna say thank you to all the volunteers because if without them, we wouldn't have these services. Bob? That's a great question. So Tuesday night at the town council meeting, actually the EMS chief came before the council and they talked about the problem that they have with Summit Medical Group, where Summit Medical Group will call for a rescue where it really is a transport, it's not an emergency. So then the, our rescue people can't get to the residents that they need to get to. So listening to them, it's really important to understand that we have to support our EMS and make Summit Medical Group do their part in paying for their own ambulance services or paying a penalty. So I know nothing happened at the time, but I'm hoping the current council actually uh, goes back to the EMS and gives them what they would like to get. Thank you. Thank you. How would you encourage a more diverse group of residents to volunteer to serve on committees, commissions, and volunteer services such as fire and rescue? Ms. Pogue? I've been bugging my husband to join the uh, EMS squad, just even as a driver. So I think if, I think, you know, if you're afraid to, to volunteer for the rescue squad, my neighbor does it. He is fantastic. He's so committed, but his term is almost ending. So I think anyone just talk to your friends and see if we can get some more support. That's another way to support the EMS is volunteer. And you can just drive. You don't have to deal with the other stuff if you're not comfortable. And it's really important that we have this service because this township cannot afford to have a paid ambulance squad. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Gordwomo. Um, I mean, this community wouldn't be what it is without the volunteers, but sometimes it's difficult to be able to get volunteers because people have families and other obligations. I think the best way to go out about getting um, a more diverse crew is just get word of mouth around town. So, you know, go up to your neighbors, your family, your friends, and suggest to them if they want to drive for the rescue squad, maybe somebody who's retired and is looking for something to do, like a retired police officer or anything, but we need the volunteers, so we just have to get the word out there. Mr. Yeah, I would um, try to create a, an outreach strategy to our younger residents. I think there are a, a lot of folks out there that are looking at ways of giving back, uh, especially this kind of newer generation. Um, and I think this is something that we could we can get a lot of them to, to do. Takuto. Uh, since elected, this has been an issue. Volunteerism. Our, towns, our volunteers in this town are the backbone, and we thank them for the tireless work that they do. You can see my support for them at their events when I attend, whether it's a paid for event or just a fundraiser. You see me posting on social media whenever they have an event that I can attend. And you see the work that we do trying to get them as much as they, when they need tools to effectively do their job. Some of the organizations in town go from the VFW, the Lori Liming Foundation, Berkeley Heights Business and Civic Association. Those are all volunteer groups and they make a big difference in our town. And what's not discussed as much, but was mentioned is that the rescue squad and the fire department are all volunteer and they save our township a lot of money by being a volunteer organization. Sometimes all people need is to hear that. Thank you. Assuming you are elected, and this will not apply to everyone, but um, what would you hope to achieve in this three-year term? Ms. Gutsatoris. I, I would like to, like, as I said in my opening statement, um, continue the progress of Mayor Devaney's leadership and you know, keep our community you know, safer, inclusive, um, our infrastructure stronger, um, our, our town is more financially responsible, um, and uh, to, to feel like uh, we, you know, we're, we're coming back, um, that feeling that we've sort of had a lull you know, from the pandemic, but we sort of you know, turned a corner and uh, we have a feeling of hope again. Takuto? If elected for the next three year term, I'd like to continue my cooperation with all parties involved in the township. After, we all have to remember that it's people, not policies or politics. 
I'm also going to be asking for more transparency, for more information, so that some of the issues that are affecting the town right now may have been found earlier, and we can then plan for the future. Things like the sewer plant, our roads, and drainage. And work as hard as I can to try to get funding for these issues. Thank you. Ms. Pope? So I said before, I'm not a politician, but I did, I did go to a municipality conference and found it really, really interesting. And one thing I learned in this one group was you want to have as many committees as your township will entertain, like where you can support them. So I think that we've gotten a lot of new committees on in the last few years, which is really important. And I think I'd like to continue to make sure that those, those are uh, fully supported. The other thing I, I talked about when I was on the master plan committee was um, accessory dwelling units. And I think it's an important thing to talk about. An accessory dwelling unit means you can have a place in your house for your 20 something, 30 something child where they have their own space and you have your own space. And also a senior citizen can um, stay age in place in their home and can be a companion or have a companion. So that's something I'd like to really look into is, is ADUs. It's the, it's the smart planning for the future. Thank you. Lord Romo. Um, if given the opportunity to be elected, um, I think we need to focus on the infrastructure, the sewer plant and drainage. And I would just like to say that this is not about politics for me. This is about Berkeley Heights. I'm not running with any grandiose political aspirations. I'm running for you the people of Berkeley Heights. I have some good ideas and I'm present for you. And I want you to be able to approach me at any time. I'm here to listen. And any issue you bring to my attention, I promise you I'll bring it to the council and we will address it. Thank you. It's time now for your closing statements. So I'm really anxious to hear what you have to say and why we should vote for you. Mr. Kudo. <clears throat> All the elections are important, and what happens in the election booth is in your hands. Today, I'm asking for your vote and support. What I said three years ago and six years ago still holds true today. We live in a great town. It happens because people care deeply about this community, and we work together to keep it that way. That includes residents, businesses, and most importantly, our volunteers. Notice, I use the word together. We need to be watchful of our tax dollars and find ways to bring all st stakeholders to the table to discuss, to listen, and to create a vision for the future. That includes our infrastructure and long-term goals, a future that includes a warm, affordable, and inclusive Berkeley Heights. So I ask you to consider what skills and actions would you deem important to your next council person? Someone with the courage to listen and collaborate with the community and local businesses for what is right and best for Berkeley Heights. Someone with a collaborative nature that can bring all parties to the table together with the federal government, the county and state governments and local shareholders so we can keep our maximum tax dollars for the benefit of Berkeley Heights residents. Someone with that strength and knowledge of over 30 years of business experience and someone who by being a professional realtor knows budgeting and negotiating. I have those skills, and I've had to continually earn your trust. I have walked the walk, not talk the talk. Michelle, Jeff, and I are excited to do the challenging work, if elected as council people, and the mayor. And we ask for your support in November. We are in this together to get the job done. You, the people of Berkeley Heights, are what make this town the special place that it is. Thank you to the League of Women Voters who sponsored tonight's debate and all for watching. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Tsitouris. Thank you so much uh, for allowing me to be here tonight and for this debate. Um, I'm glad the League of Women Voters is doing this even at a much lower local level. I've always seen these debates on TV, but I've never really appreciated them or been in one and uh, such an intimate role. Um, I'm also very pleased that there seems to be a lot of uh, agreement, um, at least in this debate over issues such as you know, infrastructure, um, even among that where you know, certain issues like drainage and the sewer plant. Um, and even though there's sort of agreement on what the priorities are, I think there's a contrast on who can actually deliver on those. And I think Mayor Devaney has done a, a really hit it out of the park the last few years 
Um, and we should, we should appreciate that because it's one thing to say something, it's another thing to deliver on it. Um, and I think uh, you know, uh, through our ticket, we can, we can deliver. Um, I've tried to deliver for our union members my whole life, uh, you know, and both as an attorney and uh, uh, in my current position. Um, and I think I, I, I can advocate in the same way that I've done all my life um, for every single resident. Um, I know that, you know, sometimes local government isn't something that people relate to, um, but I think I, I, I'll go out there and I'll own people's support so that we can be stronger um, and uh, we can, uh, you know, prosper. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Bartiromo. Okay, so I'm going to end this uh, the same way I opened it. I spent six years dressing up in a ridiculous owl costume to be the greatest cheerleader for my son's school at Woodruff School, and I want to now become the biggest cheerleader for Berkeley Heights. I know how to get to yes when the question is, what is the best, what is in the best interest of this town and the residents of the community? I know how to work with the people who have differing views and how to cut a deal that makes sense to both the customer, who in this case is a resident of this town and the bottom line. I have worked with people of all stripes and with all different views that differ from mine. And by listening and working cooperatively, I have always been able to broker compromise beneficial to all. It's not easy. There has to be compromises and intelligent discussions as well as knowledge of a long-term plan to achieve our goals. I pledge to you that I will use my best efforts to ensure the residents of Berkeley Heights will receive government that is transparent, accountable, and open. I ask for your support in this campaign and to please vote column A. Thank you, and Ms. Pope. I'm gonna say, Michelle, you can still dress in that owl costume and come on over to Woodruff School. I sure would. Come to the cafe. So Jack Welsh said, before you are a leader, success is all about growing yourself. When you become a leader, success is about growing others. As a, membership of a leader, as a member of a leadership cohort during the last three years, I learned how to better communicate with adult learners by understanding we all have different ways of knowing. Your ways of knowing are how you make sense of the world. I believe my leadership skills, creativity, and energy can bring an integral and needed perspective back onto the dais. Our community must exist to support the people that live, work, play, and learn here. We must be resilient and prepared to address the evolving natural and human-made world around us. I'm so proud to be on the ticket with Mayor Devaney. I worked alongside her for two years on council as she navigated through some of the most difficult times our town has ever seen. She has helped build a community that truly respects all residents. I'm excited to have Dio by my side. As a newer resident to town and a younger generation, he brings a fresh perspective to the needs and wants of living in the 2020s. I know you've all heard many people say that it isn't a Republican or Democratic way to fix a pothole, or as JFK said, let us not seek the Republican answer or the Democratic answer, but the right answer. Let us not seek to fix the blame for the past. Let us accept our own responsibility for the future. I am ready to accept responsibility to commit to the future of Berkeley Heights as a councilwoman who has experience and can hit the job running. Your vote for Devani Pogan Satoris is a vote for a community that is better together. Vote column B, vote by mail or in person. We are better together. Thank you. Let's thank them all for sharing their views. You have a job before you to determine which of the candidates you would like to represent you on your town council. Um, I urge you not only to vote uh, by yourself, but to encourage others because it is important, it is imperative that we all take part in the process. And now from League of Women Voters. Uh, the League would like to thank the candidates first and foremost for their participation. Audience for coming or watching at home to learn about the candidates and the issues. Our moderator for facilitating the evening. Township of Berkeley Heights for permitting us to use the council chambers and their Zoom link. This, is, uh, this has been recorded and it will appear in a couple of days on the league's website, lwvbhnts.org. 
On uh, on or around September 24th, your vote by mail ballots will be sent to you if you have applied for them. Early voting starts October 29th and ends November 6th. Monday through Saturdays from 10 o'clock to 8 o'clock, Sundays from 10 o'clock to 6 o'clock, and early voting is voting on the machine. Even provisional ballots, you get to vote on the machine. You still have to fill out the affidavit, but at least the ballot, you get to vote on the machines for that as well. We do have a drop box. It's in Snyder Park, so your mail and ballots can be put there, and they'd be very secure. Of course, November 8th, is election day and polls are open from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. There's a great um, site. It's called Union County Votes and everything you want to know about elections, whether you're registered to vote, to get a voter registration form, uh, where are the early voting sites? There's seven in, in uh, Union County. The closest one is in New Providence at the Corso Center. And you can vote as a Union County um, registered voter in any of these particular sites. So I strongly urge people to go to uniontcountyvotes.org and get the information about uh, learning to vote. As a league member, it is our duty, very important to me personally, that people get educated as to candidates and issues and make an educated decision at the polling place whatever polling place they decide to choose. I thank you very much again for coming. Good evening and get home safely.